Do animals really feel pain? What is pain? Pain is something that we all feel. Pain can be defined into physical and emotional pain. Physical pain is something which we all go through, maybe a mild headache, or something which is more profound, such as a traumatic injury. What is emotional pain? Emotional pain is something we go through if we lose a match, if we lose a loved one. What makes an animal different than us? Do they really feel pain? Experts say that higher vertebrates, like dogs, cattle, elephants, and horses, do also feel emotional pain. And why is it that we feel that animals don't feel physical pain? Here, I'd like to make a quote. A very famous Mr. Anthony Williams once said, "If they live." They feel. If they feel, they love. If they love, they are aware. If they are aware, they have a soul. If they have a soul, just like you and me, they feel the pain. Not long ago, maybe a couple of months back, I was woken up by a call in the middle of the night by a rescue team called Raw. They rescued this small baby monkey, and they called on me. Which I thought was dead. When I reached there and I saw the beautiful baby, almost laying unconscious with pain, and as I picked him up in my hands, I knew this was a tough night for the little baby. As he lay lifeless in my arms, with burn wounds almost second degree all over the body, it was found that he lay lifeless near his dead mother, who was also. Electrocuted, and couldn't take the high voltage shock, and died because of the shock. This baby lay lifeless next to her till it was rescued and brought into the clinic. I knew this night was tough for the little boy. We started with our pain meds. We started with the oxygen. We started with giving him some saline and life-saving drugs. I knew it was a tough night, but he makes through the night. There is a good possibility he says he says daylight, and then probably will live longer in life. As I went through the night with him, with painful moans, he came out to consciousness and lay there just looking at me. I decided to take him home and keep him with me till at least he's a little stable. It was a tough fight for both him and me. To see him go through that pain each day, imagine the pain when you cannot hold your food in your hands because your bones have been charred because of pain and the shock. Imagine not being able to swallow food, the pain there in swallowing the food because of the ulcers in the mouth, and the worst part is not being able to urinate and defecate. He would take weird positions to be able to pass urine because, as the warm urine flew through his body with the burn, the fresh burn marks and the injuries, he would shriek in pain. My heart used to really bleed seeing Babu Lal like this. I called him Babu Lal out of love because he was such a beautiful and fighting spirited animal. Days went into weeks, and we complemented his treatment with a lot more. Medication, some laser technique, some more modified pain meds. Saw him into getting into a little, small, naughty little monkey, doing little naughty tricks than before. That gave me a very high spirit, and I said yes. A little more effort into this little guy will make him fight pain beautifully. Weeks went into months, and then came a time. When he started interacting with the other animals in such a wonderful way, it was so nice to see Babu Lal behave like a normal monkey. He started eating his food on his own, and joy had no boundaries for me. And then came a time for me to get into emotional pain 
because the day came to bid him goodbye. It was a very, very wonderful moment when he saw his kind and couldn't control his emotions. He became one of them and was ready to leave to his home, the forest. This is such a beautiful experience that I am blessed to experience in my life as a vet. I'd like to ask the people here and the students here, how many of you all have pet animals in your house? I'm sure a lot of you have pet animals. And how many of you speak to them? Yes, speak to them. Communicating with your animals is so wonderful because they are not our species. It can only happen if you are able to connect to them and understand them. I want to tell you such a wonderful experience of a 10-year-old boy who came to my practice. His name was Karan, and he came with this pet bird called Tweety and his parents. Karan told me, Doctor, my bird's not good. I looked at his parents and I asked them, what's wrong with Karan's bird? The parents told me, Doctor, the bird's absolutely fine. Karan is a paranoid child. The bird's eating well. She's drinking well. She looks okay to us, but he insisted that she is not well. So I looked at Karan and asked him, what happened, Karan? Karan looks at me and tells me in his tiny voice, Doctor, Tweety is really not well. They don't know. She doesn't whistle anymore when I come back from school. She had a very, very typical whistle, which she used to do only for me. Please make her better, doctor. I know she's not well. There I went. I got Tweety out of the cage, physically examined her, and found something which was not right with her abdomen. X-rays were taken, and we found that this bird actually had an egg inside her. This is a very typical condition which happens in certain, in certain female birds, which is called egg binding. It can be severely fatal if it is not identified on time. Amazing, amazing. The boy Karan's connect to the bird made him realize that there was something missing and the bird was in pain. This this bird experienced probably spasmodic pains, and she expressed it by not whistling, which is a very subtle sign and was very great for that boy to pick it up. Tell me, how sensitive are we as people to the animals around us? There are so many people who don't have animals, but we still witness different varieties of insects, birds, and animals that cross our path in our daily lives. Are we sensitive to them? Forget being sensitive. Are we even aware of their presence sometimes? I don't think so. The great Mahatma Gandhi once made a beautiful quote. The greatness of a nation and its moral progress depends on the way its animals are treated. What direction are we moving into? Here are some pictures of some things we do, maybe not aware, but we can create so much pain and trauma to the animals around us. For instance, the glue traps that we use in our house. Are we aware how much torture and pain some other innocent animal goes, go through? I'm not asking you to love rats, but that doesn't mean that they end up into such a torturous way. Some other animals like snakes and sparrows become squirrels, become victims of those. And trust me, it's not easy to get the glue out. Sometimes their skins get ripped off and they die horrible deaths. Diwali is such a beautiful occasion for us. Imagine what it does to these mute creatures. In our day-to-day -day lives, we see the chickens being carried to their death space. Do you, would you ever like to be held like this? Where is compassion? I'm not asking everybody to be vegetarian, but I'm saying that there is a little more alternative to what we can do for them. At least be kinder to them. The bullfight, it's such a cruel sport to see an animal go through pain and bleed in front of your eyes. Where is the world leading to? I have no idea. It seems that experts say 
that about 150 to 200 species are wiped off every single day. What are we doing to our ecosystem? Where are we leading to? I don't want to talk much about this, because I want you to be empathy, have empathy towards animals. I'm saying this because if we need a beautiful tomorrow, we have to be conscious. Where are we going towards? Like my own story with my dog, Rocky, he was a beautiful dog. He shared his house space with me for 13 years. I brought him up like a puppy. And suddenly one day, I see Rocky unable to get up. It seems he was suffering from a disease called introvertible dis disease. 11 years in my practice, I had come through so many animals that had crossed my path, elevated their pain, and given them new lease of life sometimes. Here was my own pet, not able to get up. Mute as he was, he would look at me with a question in his eye. He was a very spirited animal, but he was 13. So a lot of my friends and colleagues said, Deepa, he's 91 years old. It's OK. How is he 91? So one year of a dog's life is equal to seven years of human life. And they all said, this is a part of old age. Everybody who gets old has aching bones, and they have a reason to die. So this is his reason. But that was not acceptable by me. How convenient it is for us to say, will we say the same thing for a human, old human person? Oh, he's old. It's OK for him to have aching bones. I don't think that's right. So what if he's an animal? He has the right to live a pain-free life. So I did a lot of research on this. And I found out that some developed countries, like the United States, have a lot more to offer for intervertebrate this diseases in dogs. And I said, I should try out something more to elevate his pain. I was lucky, very, very lucky and fortunate enough to be able to go to the United States and pick up some excellent tips about acupuncture. It's so unique to see those dogs go through these modules, which are available for them. I felt how unlucky the dogs are in India, that we can't give them this beautiful alternative therapies or modules of pain management. I bought back, like a greedy child, all that I could gather from there and started implementing it in my work. I did whatever I could get my hands on, laser techniques, acupuncture for animals, and I saw huge beneficial effects that I could give. It was like a new weapon I had in my hands to manage pain. It was so beautiful because I saw the results with street animals. NGOs came forward with their animals for me to work on. And some of the animals that were dying and left on the road got new lease of life with these modules. It was then that I was so lucky and destined, with luck, to go on a board such as IVAPM. IVAPM is a huge platform to learn about pain management. The whole idea is to focus about recognizing pains in different animals, including reptiles. I mean, how do you recognize pain in reptiles? Nevertheless, the research is still on, and pain modules are being formulated for them. And I was a lucky individual to go on an international board and become a board of director representing Asia, it was a huge, huge platform for me to learn. And like a greedy girl, I went and brought all the knowledge back with me. Every year, I got to learn so many more beautiful things. Modules such as good quality cold lasers, which are so different from other quality lasers, and they gave more beneficial results. Modules like physiotherapy. These are therapies which are done in human beings also. And these are therapies which actually work for handicapped pets for them to develop their dying muscles or atrophying muscles. I got back home the knowledge of hydrotherapy, which is an underwater treadmill for dogs. This is a very unique therapy, which is very effective. Underwater, the dog is made to walk, and it can help him develop the muscles. As I came back and I started implementing this on my own dog and other animals, I saw there was a huge change. My own dog was free of pain. 
It was so wonderful to see him like that. But yet, I was not able to make him get up. Then came the time when I learned about the wheel cart. It was an amazing thing for him. It changed his life. The day I got the wheel cart home and I put Rocky on the wheel cart, he was a different dog. He looked at me and he said, Mama, you've got me my legs back. I can walk. <laughs> that day, I felt I was so happy. It was another life for my animal. And I was so happy for him that his last years of his life were not that of a disabled animal. So my journey continued with helping other animals and pet parents who had disabled animals and wanted to help them to be pain-free and walk again. His story reached the media, and media helped me reach people to help them eliminate pain. And what's more beautiful than speaking up about the quote by Dalai Lama, which speaks volumes here to end my TED Talk to you. Life is as dear to a mute animal as it is to you and as it is to me. Just as one wants to be happy and have happiness in his life and fears pain, just as one wants to be alive and not dead, so do all the other creatures deserve that. I just want to pass one message before I end this journey, not of my pain, you know, learning about pain, but just to tell you that it's so simple to let live and live pain-free for all and be a little more sensitive as human beings. Thank you so much for having me here once again. Thank you.